Hello and welcome back to the Shovel Knight Any% Percent tutorial series. Today we're covering the Iron Whale. In this stage we'll start to make use of a lot of uh, throwing the coin and then knuckling the coin in order to move ahead of it. Now while this tactic only saves a couple frames in certain situations, in other situations it actually will save a decent chunk more of time, depending on where it's being used and why. Now the coin is a very expensive weapon to use, it's actually 8 magic per use. On top of the fact that we use knuckles in order to move along with it, um, that means it's going to cost a lot more magic than may be worth. So very consistently I was getting down to about 15 magic uh, after this room. Now because of the way magic works with the Conjurer's Coat that we picked up in the Armor Outpost, um, we're not guaranteed to get drops if we don't kill it with knuckles or with our shovel. Otherwise, any enemy can technically drop magic, and then you're more concerned about whether or not you can actually pick up that magic, because magic, just like money, falls in random ways. So, unless if you get a big drop of magic at some point, you're probably not going to be able to do every single trick in this stage, and you may want to adjust by cutting out some of the only frame savey coin knuckles. Because when it comes to this mini boss, you absolutely want to have at least 16 magic so that you can knuckle this guy 8 times. And once again, I will be covering alternatives that you can do throughout the stage if you are still sticking with the Flare Wand and Chaos Orb route. But bear in mind something that's going to be a little bit more prevalent now that we're getting toward the end game of this guide. Regarding Chaos Orb and Flare Wand uh, techniques, um, especially on boss kills, I'm not going to be going like incredibly in-depth on them. The whole purpose of Chaos Orbs and Flare Wand is that they save you time and they are easy to use, they supplement your run. They are no longer the most optimal thing to do, so if you're going to continue using them I'll give you examples, um, some fights that you can look at to kind of uh, give you an idea of what you should be doing, but most of the time they won't be as polished as the examples I'm going to show with Coin and neither list to a lesser extent. That said, this guide will still have plenty of difficult tricks that you can go for, uh, things like this anchor skip. There's a nice little setup for it, so I'll be showing off plenty of ways to make through the stage that don't require the use of anything, and you're still going to want to look at this guide for. And I will point out things like, hey, you know, there's some food that you can grab, or for example, that dinner plate on the bottom left right there is actually the last one in the stage, so if you are running low on health, which is something a lot of runners uh, run into as a problem in this stage, is just being low on health, uh, you're going to want to probably grab that. Conjurer's Coat may increase our total maximum mana, but it also increases the damage we take, making the Treasure Knight fight one of the scariest fights in the game. And while I would have said Treasure Knight was one of the more random knights in terms of things he could do and how you would have to react to him, turns out he actually has uh, two very consistent patterns that you can deal with, but they are very high execution. So if you don't manage to get enough damage in, you'll probably want to get used to a backup kill or just a way to clean up the fight in general. Now when it comes to coin movement, as long as you have the time to coin knuckle at least three times, um, sometimes twice is fine, um, and then jump cancel afterwards, it's optimal as a frame saver, but in, in instances like in this first room, it really is only saving you the movement on a, on a flat horizontal plane. Even using the coin to get over this pit isn't exactly much more of a time save over just jumping over the pit yourself, because you're not gaining any extra benefits from it, you're still essentially just moving forward. However, in this room, and this does require you to be quickly, if you fire a coin and knuckle it three times, you'll be able to avoid having to fall all the way to the bottom of the screen before jumping back up to get over this ledge. And out of the three examples I've shown so far, this one is the one that's most worth keeping, while if you were trying to cut out coin knuckles from your run, the first two are ones you want to look at removing. Again, in this room, although it's possible to get through by using knuckles, which is slightly faster, it's slightly faster than just walking along or even pogoing, um, there is the other way of getting through this room if you want to save a little bit more magic, but this is one that I would consider doing because knuckles are not expensive, or not nearly as expensive as using the coin. Alternatively, with well-timed pogos, you can actually make it just fine past this guard. And should you fail this coin trick in this room, because this is pretty precise to have to do, again, all you would literally be doing afterwards is just jumping, landing on the other side of this ledge, and then doing a full jump again, you won't jump into spikes, I assure you. 
Now, on a list of reasons why you might be running out of magic in this stage, it's specifically because of this trick by Magic Madman that uses the coin in this room. You could also cut out these first two knuckles that you guarantee you get the five magic. As soon as you've killed the tentacle, drop a coin and then start juggling it. Once on the ground, uh, once more on the first jump, and then one last time with a final jump so that it actually hits this tentacle in the head, allowing you to fall sooner before you would have to kill this tentacle. It means that you'll be leaving the room a little bit faster while getting a little bit more money. Alternatively, if you don't have coins, uh, you would just go through the room like this, where you would clear out the first tentacles as usual, again, optionally, using knuckles or not. It won't take you a great deal of time to jump up and slash the tentacle. Now there's a coming up room that we call the tentacle room, and by moving yourself to where the tentacle previously was in this room, you can see me lining myself up here, a little pattern in the wall in the background. As I hit the screen transition, I immediately hold right and start mashing the relic button as hard as I can. If I drop down from the correct spot, then when I enter the next room, my relic will come out in such a way that it'll clear out the first two tentacles. Afterwards, the coin likes to bounce around like crazy, but it'll actually bounce and clear out the third tentacle not too long afterwards. You could pogo, which is slower, but optimally you'll switch to knuckle and knuckle the tentacle to leave the room. So again, at full speed, you're lighting yourself up in this previous room, mashing the coin to the right, pogoing, and then switching to knuckle. Now, if you happen to have the Chaos Orb, this is actually even faster, and you're doing something very similar. Instead, line yourself up against the wall, and then mash your relic as soon as you enter the room. Instead, you'll clear out all the tentacles almost immediately. And then if you're going neither lists, or you're doing more low percent stuff, uh, this is how you would do it without any weapons. On the way down, you're going to swing your weapon and then immediately pogo. You should be able to clear out the first two tentacles, take a damage boost, clear the head, land on the spikes, swing, and then immediately jump so you don't die to spikes. Now this room has another one of those frame savey tricks, but this is one that Applesauce recommends as it's not terribly difficult to execute. Line yourself flush up against the wall, then barely tap left, just enough to turn around. Then don't hold any direction and knuckle once you are next to the snail so that you get underneath the blocks. This prevents you from having to wait for the snail to pass by before you can do this. Otherwise you can time this by just mashing jump four times before moving afterwards. And now for the lovable scamp, Teethalon. Now this mini boss uh, is <laughs> well known for not cooperating with the player's intentions. Let this kill serve as an example of an ideal situation and what you should do getting into the fight. Make sure you're baiting the last enemy so that you have plenty of room and opportunity to get a charge slash off to start the fight. Now ideally you'll get four knuckles off before flipping out of it and then falling down. You want to avoid taking damage from the Teethalon. If you can, you'd like to be able to swing at it on the way back down. And you always want to try and knuckle in such a way that you're killing enemies rather than falling into them and then taking damage. Now again, other weapons really aren't going to be useful, so just make sure you have the 16 magic required for all the knuckles. Bait the last enemy, charge slash, release, 1, 2, 3, 4. Charge slash, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now for this very easy version of Dirt Cloud Skip, all you need to do is jump, and at the apex of your jump, start holding down and right, and you should be able to grab the ladder without bonking into the ceiling. Reminder that without S Trainer, practicing this trick is really annoying as dirt clouds don't respawn upon death. Of course, I'd get yelled at if I didn't show off the I'm an idiot strat. Don't ever actually risk going past this missile without getting hit. More often than not, you'll get hit. However, once you get to the top of this ladder, walk off, don't run or jump. You'll just naturally walk onto this missile. It's really, really easy, so don't stress yourself with trying to time a jump onto a missile. Now, if you want a dumb strat, this is the strat that you're actually looking for. While this first swing is entirely free, the remaining four pogos are certainly not, and I'm really only showing this off so you know it's a thing that exists. Uh, you really should just be doing four knuckles on this guy, and you shouldn't ever not have the magic for it. So now we're going to be covering both of the anchor skips, and although the second one was widely regarded as accessible for the speed one, the first one was memed upon for its difficulty. But if you look at the background behind this dirt pile, when Shovel Knight's left horn lines up with the bolts in the back, if you do a full jump, you'll actually be uh, perfectly positioned to land on the anchor, then immediately jump afterwards as you won't have much time to make it up onto the next ledge. Thank you, Applesauce, for this visual cue. So next will be Anchor 2. You'll want to do a light jump so that as Shovel Knight hits the water, the anchor will fall a little bit faster than him because he's falling a little bit slower, therefore you'll actually get the chance to just walk onto the anchor. It'll lower down and then you'll be able to walk onto it. 
do a full jump from there and then the moment you enter the water again, use a coin and you'll be knuckling it. Now this version of the trick that uses the coin is much more difficult. So even if you have the coin, if you'd like to go for the version of it without, you'd just be doing another soft jump from the first anchor you land on, and then you'll be doing a hard jump. Uh, watch out for the fireballs, though, as they pass you by. And with these dirt blocks, if you swing at them while you're falling down, you'll actually clear out both of them in one jump. Then you can clear out the last dirt block without interacting with the Duck Knight, and you'll be able to fall down and pick up some money as well. So again, remember your visual cue, full jump, jump, and then do a pogo off the right side of the snail. And then for your second one, have your coin ready, land softly on the first one, coin knuckle under the last. The Treasure Knight is a very difficult fight, uh, specifically because of the first method I'll be covering, which uses the coin. Regardless of the opening pattern, you'll be starting the same by launching a coin and jumping as soon as possible. Switch over to your knuckles and punch through the anchor. Now on this first pattern, the anchor is going to come back to you. He won't reel himself in. So as you swing at him from the ground, jump, make sure the swing comes out so it deals damage to him. Get a charge slash off on him, and then you'll be taking damage from the anchor as it retracts. This will leave you closer to the center of the room, but wait for him to come up to you, and then start doing a series of shovel attacks, where you'll be doing one swing from the ground, jump cancel, one swing in the air, and then another one on the way back down. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three in this rhythm. This rhythm is different compared to attacking on land, so do make sure you practice Treasure Knight quite a lot, as this is extremely difficult, unless if you're playing on keyboard, which would allow you to hold left and right at the same time, which would push you a little bit further to the left of Treasure as you're doing this attack. It's really, really difficult to do it on controller, so I actually didn't do it here, but it's something that you can do if you're a keyboard user. So again, at full speed, jump coin, knuckle, Slash, charge, slash, one, two, three, 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 four. Now, the only other pattern you're going to have to learn using the coin if you do this method involves him pulling himself uh, along with the anchor when he fires it. Fight starts out the same, coin, knuckle through the anchor, but instead he's going to pull himself forward. So after the charge slash, you're going to turn around and immediately use a dust knuckle. From here, you're doing one swing to the left, then immediately turn around and start doing your sets of three facing the right. This is also much easier if you're playing on keyboard where you can just hold both directions at the same time. But this fight's already extremely difficult to do on controller with having to worry about holding two directions with one hand somehow. So again, here's pattern two. Jump coin, knuckle, charge slash, turn around, knuckle. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Now I did say I would cover orbs and flare one, orbs being a really good weapon on this fight actually, based on which pattern Treasure Knight gives you. For an easy damageless intro, just do a full jump as the anchor approaches and drop two orbs once you're near Treasure Knight. So long as you can effectively get the hang of attacking underwater, then you should be able to deal a ton of damage to Treasure Knight, especially since he'll dive straight into those orbs as they come back out. So here's your orb fight. Full jump, launch two orbs, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Oh, a little too far. That's okay, because this fight's super easy. <laughs> now for the slightly more challenging fight, you're going to have to just deal with this as a Flare 1 user, because they won't bounce around like the Chaos Orbs and deal a ton of damage. Just keep wailing on them, and if the Anchor does come back and hit you, that's fine. It's probably going to put you in a better position to keep up your Assault. Now, because you're not dealing enough damage to him like you would with the other weapons, uh, he may end up doing other attacks. It's once he's under that 4 HP threshold that he'll start doing things like moving to the corner of the room and trying to use the treasure chest. Luckily, so long as you're right up in his face, you can spam the flare wand pretty handily. So once more at full speed, start off with a regular set of attacks. Take damage from the anchor, that's fine, keep up close to him, use flare wand when you think you can and anticipate him to move into the corner when his health is low. Now while this is extremely important, it is extremely easy, so I'm not going to have to say much to cover it, but this is the second dream sequence, and dying is actually really easy so long as you only have 4 HP and you have the Conjurer's Coat. So if you happen to grab extra HP at the start of the run, unfortunately this trick and this setup isn't going to be for you, uh, but that's okay. You have other things you need to work on first, if that's the case. Shoutouts to Speedfrog who came up with this setup a while ago. So take damage from the left Duck Knight, run to the right, take damage from the Beaker, pogo off the Duck Knights, twice off the Birder, swing, and then you'll die. 
hilariously that causes you to slide out and i mean it just looks incredible <laughs> but uh that's it for world two the next episode will be covering the flying machine and all the joys that world three brings us as long as you've been moving quickly enough through each level, um, Reese shouldn't be entering World 2 and messing you up in any way, and Black Knight 2 also shouldn't spawn for a much, much longer time. So, thank you for watching. See you next time.